Hello my dear friends, you are on the Military Summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 17th of August. Today we have some updates, so let's start. First we are going to discuss the numbers that we received from the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. According to the report, uh, there was some rocket attack during the previous hours. And first let's discuss the Charlie group, the area between Artemovsk and Seversk, this area. And the Russians are saying that during the previous hours they attack, maybe not even hours, maybe the, according to the previous battles with on this front line near town by the name of Yakovlevka. This one's Charlie group, one of the most important fortified position in this area. And this town, Yakovlevka, is uh, in the area, uh, in the responsible zone of the uh, 10th Mountain Brigade. And as a result of previous battles, this brigade... Uh, had a lot of losses and because of that losses there is there are a lot of cases of desertion and the Russians are saying that more than 33% of infantry from this brigade left the battlefield in a known direction. This town near Yakovlevka Solidar in this area. Another important update are coming from the Slavensk area. The Russians uh, are saying that as a result of rocket attack they destroyed the ammo, ammo depot and uh, of this 95th Air Assault Brigade. And as a result of this uh, attack, this brigade lost something around 30 soldiers. Another important update are coming from the south, from the Nyansk district. The Russians uh, were saying that they attacked this 66 mechanized brigade. And we discussed this brigade many times. If we take a look at this table, there were a lot of updates about the losses of this brigade. Uh, as you can see, since the uh, 12th of August, we see that 3rd Battalion lost something around 50%. Then we, then we got some real numbers of uh, losses. Then on the 15th of August, we got update that this 3rd Battalion lost something around 70%. And uh, today we got update from the, the Minister of Defense that the uh, cases there are also cases of desertion and that something more than 50 percent of infantry from this brigade that located in marinka left their position in a known direction so this situation and these numbers that we received from the minister of defense as, uh, as you can see the situation is critical a lot of battalions a lot of brigades uh, are leaving their position and mainly we see that the ukrainians the ukrainian forces don't want to fight in the area in Marinka, in Pieski, and uh, in the area of Charlie Group. Other uh, brigades still uh, ho hold their position, and uh, let's see uh, what is going to be next. Uh, now let's talk, talk about the progress, about development on the ground. Uh, the Russians, today we got some very interesting report from some Russian sources. This is information, there is no confirmation of that information on any map, but uh, there was just one confirmation from the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation that a few days ago they told that the Russians managed to take control over Udy. Uh, this town is located on the north from Kharkiv, but none of the map has been updated. But today we got another report from very famous Russian sources that uh, the Russians managed not just to take um, control over Udy, but they developed their offensive operation. They managed to crack the defense on the north from Kharkiv and also the Russians managed to take Udy, Baranovka, uh, Tsuluriki uh, and they got uh, Adnarobovka and, and they stopped somewhere on the line in front of Alexandrovka. So let's update this map. So according to some Russian sources, the Russians managed to get all this area on the north of Kharkiv. So let's wait a little bit. Maybe it's some kind of speculation maybe not but i suppose I suppose if this information is correct sooner or later or later we are going to see more updates if i take a look at the map of this position you're gonna see that this area is in the responsible zone of 113th defense brigade and these sources are saying that this uh, as you can see uh, there were no uh, heavy clashes or no offensive operation from both sides on this front line so maybe the Russians just wanted to test and uh, uh, they tested this um, piece of front line and they cracked the Ukrainians and uh, the Ukrainians were forced to leave. And now there are very heavy clashes around town by the name of Zolochev, this one. Um, what is the point of this attack? 
I'll explain to you. If you remember, the Russians, during the first assault of Kharkiv, were trying to crack Dirgachi, this town. They were trying to encircle Dirgachi using the not very wide uh, encirclement. So, as you can see, uh, there is a um, blue cloud, grey cloud, showing us the progress of the Russians, let's say, on the right side from Kharkiv, this one. As you can see, the, Ru the Russians managed to encircle Kharkiv very much. You see that they completely established control over uh, the northwest part uh, and the west part of Kharkiv. And the same thing they were trying to do on the east side, and they were moving towards Dirgachi, and after Dirgachi, the Russians were planning to establish control over let's say Piresnice and so on. So this was the original plan of the Russians when they were trying to encircle Kharkiv. But they couldn't do this for many reasons. And one of them that Ukrainians had a lot of artillery system in, in town and with this artillery system they um, was very successful and they managed to stop any Russian offensive operation uh, on this short uh, encirclement plan. So that's why the Russians decided to change their plan, to change their tactic. And in the upcoming Kharkiv campaign, the Russians decided to encircle Kharkiv using the wide encirclement. Not through Dirgachi and so on, but they decided to do encirclement on the line of Zolochev. And this town, as we discuss, uh, uh, Bogodukhov, this one. So, and with help of this, they will be able to reduce their losses from artillery that Ukrainians are using from Kharkiv and so on. So this is the progress and let's follow the situation as well. Another important update are coming from Bakhmut, Siversk area. The Russians, there are still very heavy clashes all along the front line. As we can see, it's very difficult for the Russians to crack this net, but today I got we got some update. This is our area uh, which, that we are talking about right now. Uh, this is Artyomovsk, uh, this town, uh, this one, pink one. And if you take a look at this map, this is it. As you can see, there is small differences between this map and this map. And now let's take a look about the progress, the Russians' progress since the 5th of August. So as you can see, this is the beginning. Then the Russians managed to enter uh, some part of Artyomovsk. After that, they stopped. Um, let's one more time, as you can see, take a look at Vershina. Today, by the way, we got update that the Russians established the final control over Vershina. Let's take a look at the Russian sources map. You're going to see this. Yes, you see that there is an icon and also that town Vershina. It's not a very big town. It's a very, it's a very small village with a few one street and a few houses. But anyway, it used to be a very powerful fortifi fortified position, and the Russians managed to take this position. Let's move one. Let's move back. And as you can see now, the Russians are developing their offensive operation in direction of Zaitsevo. Uh, this is small another fortification Zaitsevo on the west side. There is a lot of trenches, as you can see. This town is located a little bit on the hill in comparison with Vershina. So this is not very easy to crack this nut. But anyway, as we discussed, the Russians stopped on the east side of Bakhmut because they understand that it's impossible to storm Bakhmut in front from one line because of mines, because of heavy fortification. So that's why they decide they need to storm this town from many sides. And one of them is from the south, but for these purposes, they still need to crack Zaitseva and Oputna. These towns, Oputna, is the, it's already a suburbs of Bakhmut and the small village Zaitseva. On this map, uh, the Russians need to move something like this. And after that, they will be able to, to storm the Bakhmut from the south. They already stormed the Bakhmut from the east side, this one. And now let's move back to this map. And uh, as you can see, there is uh, two arrows on the north from the middle one. The one, the one arrow between two lines is the Russians are moving towards Podgorne. This is town Podgorne, so we can say that the Russians is already, according to this map and according to source informa information, the Russians at least entered the east side of this town, is this small block. If we take a look at this map, we can say that they, the, this arrow shows the soft position of the Russians. And another arrows show us that the Russians are still trying to crack Solidar and they are still trying to crack Yakovlevka. And as we discussed in the beginning of this video, Yakovlevka is under responsibility of 10th Brigade. And as I told you, the desertion of um, this brigade is something around 33%. So I suppose that very soon 
the Russians can crack this nut, but don't forget that the Ukrainians on this front line have a lot of infantry brigades. Uh, there are more than eight infantry brigades, so we can say that there are a lot of thousands of soldiers, so it won't be very easy to crack Yakovlevka. But if the Russians are able to take this small town, it will open um, the north door to storm Solidar from the north. Another one, let's one more time take a look at Solidar. This is Solidar. And by the way, according to this map, you see that town by the name of Bakhmutska has already fallen. Let's take a look one more time on the progress. You see that uh, by today, by the 7th of August, we can say, and these sources are saying, that Bakhmutska has fallen. Bakhmutska is this town. So let's update this map just to understand how much of territory is under Russian control. So according to this progress, this is exactly the area that has been taken by the Russians by uh, this uh, evening of 17th of uh, August. So this is the progress that the World Sources map uh, don't want to show us. Uh, but maybe it's some kind of speculation, but it's not the only source that report about this. This source just provided us the map, but a lot of sources are saying that the Russians established the final control of Bakhmutska. Maybe there are still mines, maybe there are still some Ukrainian soldiers who is hiding in some buildings and so on. But anyway, this territory is under Russian control, and I suppose that there were a few counter-offensive operations from the Ukrainian side, but all this operation was failed and the Ukrainians were defeated and if you remember um, if you take a look at the map of this position you see that this area is under protection of 58th motorized brigade and also there are there is 14th um, mechanized brigade few battalions and all these brigades like 14th and these 58th had a lot of losses during the previous weeks during the previous battles so i suppose that they are no longer able to keep the russians but the ukrainians still move more and more enforcement to stop the russians and not to give them any opportunity to do a few things that they are going to do first to establish control over solidar and the second one to cut this area into pieces like the north one that located on the severs to Solidar and from Solidar towards Artyomovs. Uh, furthermore, some Ukrainian military experts are saying that the Russians are preparing the another cauldron near Siversk because, as you can see, the actions and near Siversk has been reduced till zero. There is just artillery duels, not nothing more. The Russians are not storming this area. They're just the only area they're trying to storm is the Charlie Group area. That means the road between Nagorno, Belogorovka, Yakovlevka, Bakhmutska. And as you can see, there is a very heavy clash near Yakovlevka, and maybe this town is going to fall very soon. And Bakhmutska has already fall fallen, according to some Russian sources. Maybe it's some kind of speculation because uh, we don't have like 100% confirmation of that fact. Now, the important update are coming from the Donetsk area. As we know, there are very heavy clashes all along the front line, and today, uh, if we're talking about the Ukrainian uh, sources, they confirmed. The Ukrainian sources confirmed that the Russians achieved significant success near a town by the name of Opetne. This one. Uh, the Russians are, don't show us any update on this area. They're showing us that they're just very heavy clashes, that there were some, um, uh, some cases of desertion, of retreat of, of Ukrainian forces and so on. This town, Opetne, this town is very fortified, but I suppose that um, when the Ukrainians were talking about Opetna, I suppose that they meant these uh, trenches between Pesky, Vadyana and Opetna, the area in this triangle. Let's take a look at this map. So I suppose that Ukrainians were talking about uh, this triangle because there are a lot of uh, fortifications and we know that the Russians are pushing from Pesky that is already under Russian control in direction of Vadyana and in direction of Piromaiska. Uh, this is these areas those two towns is less fortified than Pesky and there are uh, Ukrainians had a lot of losses in these uh, zones so that's why the Russians are pushing but if we are talking about Oputna maybe maybe the Russians also pushing towards Oputna from this direction it's also a possibility there is a road there were also a lot of clashes and today we got some reports that some area around Avdiivka was cracked maybe the Ukrainians were talking about this small town Oputna maybe 
Another important uh, picture uh, for better understanding we have from the area between Marinka and Ugledar, this one, this area. Uh, this is the map. Uh, you see that this red border shows us the territory, the border, the real front line between two, between Russia, the Russians and uh, the Ukrainians. As you can see, there is a lot of changes with the situation of the map that we can see. First of all, with this map, the Russians are trying to say that they managed to to cut the road that connects uh, that leads to Uglidar in two places. The first one on the north from Nikolska, this one you see, and the second one is uh, this road was cut in the area between Pabeda and Marinka. We discussed the situation also many times, but we didn't discuss the situation near Nikolska. Now let's take a look at the West Sources map. Um, so the Russians, according to their information, uh, they managed to establish control over this area. So uh, this is softly about the south part of this cloud, but the mo most important that the Russian control big part of Marinka, and now they're trying to storm Pabeda or at least to cut the road of supply. There are still way how to supply Pabeda from this from the south and using the fields and the local roads, but believe me, all these fields is mined, so there are not much way how to support this area. And I think that soon this town is going to be taken and. And we'll see what's going to be next near Marinka. But now let's discuss uh, Uglidar, this town. According to the West Sources map, you see that all the towns I mentioned is under Ukraine control. Pavlovka, Uglidar, Nikolska, these towns. But according to this map that was provided by the Russian military sources, you see that Pavlovka and Nikolska, these two towns in the south of Uglidar, is already under Russian control. You see these two towns. And let's move back to this area. So these two towns is under the Russians. So let's update this map just for better understanding. This one. So as you can see, according to the Russian sources, this territory is under Russian control. This one. If you remember a few days ago, there was very important update from the Russians in this area that they managed to break through the defense of Ukrainians in the south and they managed to take a lot of towns, they managed to take a lot of territories, but we didn't got any updates about the real num the, the, the real titles, real towns. So this map shows us the progress of the Russians on the south. And the most important thing that, as you can see from town Nikolskaya, and this town Nikolska, the Russians managed to attack on the north from Uglidar and let's update this map. So the Russians attack in this direction and they cut this road and now they have some soft position on the north from Uglidar. And this is very important area because if you take a look at this map, you're going to see this uh, like um, green uh, clouds and there is small let um, numbers like eight, nine, and the 29 what does it mean this is the high, highlands this so that means that this area is on the higher position than town uglidar so uh, from this point of view this is a perfect position to establish fire control over uglidar because you are able to control this town from the top and this town is on the bottom if in comparison with this area. And if you're talking about Uglidar, there are still like few roads. This one that leads to Uglidar, but I'm not sure that Ukrainians are able to use it because if Pavlovka is under Russian control, as this map show us, and this, uh, so that means that Ukrainians are no longer able to use this road. The only one road that Ukrainians can use is the fields or the local roads, but some of these local roads moves from Uglidar towards the hills that the Russians establish control. So we can say if this information correct about uh, cutting this road, these hills that located on the no northeast from Uglidar, uh, this one, that means that Uglidar has appeared in operational tactical encirclement. There is no more roads that the Ukrainians from Uglidar are able to use for supply and support. And to tell the truth, Uglidar was the only town that stopped the Russians from their from developing of their offensive operation in the south. This is a very fortified area. Let's take a look at this map and I will explain to you why this area is so important. Uh, this our town Uglidar, this one. 
as you can see the Russian source map has been updated they're moving the move the gray line uh, the uh, real um, front line in this area but they are still saying that maybe Pavlov can steal on the Ukrainians a lot of question about this town so as you can see there are at least three types of information by the way let's take a look at the map of this position what the, do this map show us about this area um, this map also show us that Pavlovka and Nikoska is still on the Ukrainians, but maybe tomorrow and day after they will update them. Uh, they will be updated. So this is Uglidar. If we take a look, for example, at Nikoiska and Pavlovka, you're gonna see that small villages with small one-floor buildings and so on. But if we take a look at Uglidar, it's a very there is no small buildings at all. It's a small town. Uh, that very compact small towns that um, uh, and it's very easy to defend this area because you can have your fire position all in every single building i suppose that there are no civilians at all or, or they have already left during these months so it's not very easy to attack this area but uh, but the russians as i see are not planning to storm this town from the south Maybe this is also the reason why the Russians decided to attack first these mines and this is the hills we were talking about. And from the north they will be able to attack this area. Um, this is small barracks on the north and they, they can take control of them and after that they will be able to move very slowly from the north in direction to the middle part of this town. But I don't think that Ukrainians should keep this area maybe uh, just to win some days few days but i suppose that it's better to save their soldiers of course they still have possibility to hold this position because their uh, the information about the towns around the city um every single map has the uh, source has have their own information so let's wait a little bit but if pavlovka has fallen and if the Russians manage to cut this road and enter this industrial zone, so I don't think that it's a very good idea to keep uh, holding this position and they need to find a solution how to retreat. But if the Ukrainian leave Uglidar and the Russians, let's say, establish control over this bridgehead, we can say that every single area from Velika and Novoselovka towards Uglidar, and I'm talking about this area, are no longer able to hold their positions and they will be collapsed by the russians very soon maybe in a week or so furthermore we discussed that the russians developed achieved some success in Novo Mikhailovka, and that become possible became possible as when the russian took control over this hill there is 60 meters uh, landfill in this area in marienka and now from this area the russians are able to control the territory some 15 10 this area from this hill the russians are able to see everything in this distance so as you can see they can control Novo Mikhailovka as well from the from the top from the landfill and with help of this the russians first of all cut supply of this town and now they're shelling this town heavily and i suppose that ukrainians are leaving this position as well not mm, by following any order they're just running and trying to save their life and if the russians are able to take Novo Mikhailovka, then they will be able to develop their offensive operation along this river along these towns and i must say that this picture shows me a Mm, disaster on the south of Kurahova of Marinka. The Ukrainians don't have possibilities to to hold this position because there are no towns, there are just fields, there are a few villages and Uglidar is the most powerful fortification and if they lose it they will lose everything on the south and the next battle we are going to see around Kurahova. Another fortified position, another well-fortified position with a lot of Ukrainians in this area. So let's see and let's follow this situation as well. If we are talking about the south, about the area between Ariakhov, um, Gulyai Pole, Velika Novoselovka, there are artillery duels as you can see. Uh, the Ukrainians and the Russians are trying to spot each other and to destroy the artillery systems of each other. If we are talking about the south, about Kherson district, there is no update. The Ukrainians also are trying to attack the Russians' ammo depot, the fuel depot and so on. And as the Russians from their side are trying to crack the Ukrainian positions all along the front line. Just one important update from this area, and this update is about this small village, Alexandrovka, on the south of Kherson, of Ukrainian-controlled territory. As you can see, according to this map, 
This map shows that this town is still under Ukrainian control. If we take a look at the Russian sources map, this town is under Russian control. Uh, this town was in the gray zone. The, the uh, few day, few months, a few weeks, the Russians were controlling. Then Ukrainians, then the Russians returned this town back. But this week also got updated that the Russians established a final control over this town. So I suppose that very soon, maybe not, but the West Source map is going to be updated. Maybe as soon as the Russians will start develop their offensive operation in direction from Alexandrovka towards Lupareva, who knows, but anyway, soon we're going to see the update on this map as well. And that's it about the front lines, about the battles and so on. Uh, thank you for your watching. Military Summer Channel remind you that we condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel, put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye.